the game tutor and tonight we're going to be looking at Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles recently released on Switch and been out on Steam for a little while now. Now going in I didn't really know what to expect with Yonder but what I found was a unique adventure game that I enjoyed from start to finish even if it's got a few wonky parts along the way. Now the first 10 minutes of Yonder draw from Zelda's history very much so. The game starts with you on a galleon heading through the seas towards the island of Jamea, very reminiscent of the Wind Waker. As the boat crashes you end up washed upon the shore and find yourself trekking through a cave until you emerge with the camera panning over a vast land that's yours to explore which is very reminiscent of the opening scene of Breath of the Wild. Now in its heart Yonder is part Zelda, part Stardew Valley and part sort of single player MMORPG. But the most unusual aspect of the game however is that there's absolutely no combat. Instead you're given free reign, almost, of the island and can travel around it completing quests, discovering secrets and building up your farm and crafting things. Now the main quest line sees a mysterious force called the Merc covering up parts of the world, making some areas inaccessible from the start. These can be removed by collecting sprites, little fairy-like creatures. Now this is where the game becomes even more Breath of the Wild-like as a large proportion of the content involves completing fetch quests and searching for things that might as well be Korok seeds. Now weirdly, while this doesn't sound appealing, it, somehow I found myself lost in this world, eager to play more and bizarrely I think the lack of combat helped this. Rather than the thrilling action ride, this was calm and relaxing and left me with very little to worry about and just enjoyed moving around and getting along for the ride. Now the world is a little empty but there's plenty of nooks and crannies to find secrets and the NPCs you encounter along the way are charming and pretty well written. Now one of the biggest downsides of the game however is travel. The island is fairly large and it's quite difficult to navigate. The in-game map is very unclear when it comes to verticality and often it can take a long time to work out exactly how to get to that specific spot on the map that seems like it should be over the next hill. Now, As you get later through the game you do unlock certain fast track points but these to a certain extent are a little bit too little too late. Now there are a few side ventures such as building a farm, planting all the trees and finding all the cats. But most of these, while fun little side ventures, never really draw you in such as just the questing and the simple exploring the world. Now Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles overall is a lovely little game that's worth playing if you're looking for something relaxing and a little bit different. Now sure it has flaws but the overall game is definitely worth more than the sum of its parts and oddly even though it borrows almost every part of its game from other franchises it ends up being one of the most unique adventure experiences I've played in a really long time because of it and one that I very much recommend. If you've enjoyed tonight's video please like and subscribe. Remember to come and check us out at thegametutor.co.uk where news, articles and videos are updated on a weekly basis. Also please check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Dailymotion.